Now this is the part I want you to get here and want you to consider. And this is what I told Bob. I said, Bob, in the very beginning, God created mankind. And he set him up in a perfect environment. There was no disease. There were no tsunamis. There were no earthquakes. There was no cancer like my wife has and had to have a double mastectomy two years ago. My first wife who died in 1999 of a stroke. I said, Bob, I understand a little bit about pain. I said, but before all this, this bad things happened, I said, it was perfect. But God set up a rule. He said, you keep the rule, things will be cool. You break the rule, there are going to be some problems. And so I said, so one day this man stuck his nubby little finger in the face of God and said, get off my back, I want to run the show, I want to make my own decisions. So he did. And I said, Bob, sometimes people have said to me when I tell them that, well, why, God, why didn't God fix it so they wouldn't make the wrong choice? And I said, that's an easy answer. Because if, they would have, if he would have done that, then they would have been a machine or a robot. And God made men, men with ability to choose, and they made a wrong choice. But I said, Bob, you need to understand something here. There were four things that happened as a result of this decision that impact you and me today. Number one, we're all cut off from God. So no longer is this relationship here with God that's intimate and close, but now men and women are cut off from him and this just gigantic gulf exists. And so the first thing is we're cut off from God. I said the second thing is we're cut off from ourselves. I said there's no man or woman on the planet that is satisfied with who they are and understanding their significance, their esteem, etc. I said, we're all psychologically, emotionally a little goofy. None of us have it all together. Whether you're 9, 19, or 90, you struggle in this area. Because I said, if you're cut off from God, there's no way in heck you're going to have it together with yourself. And then thirdly, I said we're cut off from others. And again, that's why we have war, that's why we have Navy SEALs, that's why we have to have attorneys. We can't just shake the hand and know it's going to be done. That's why we have a divorce rate and on and on and on and on it goes. Because if you're cut off with God and you're cut off with yourself, how in the heck are we going to get people together and think they're just going to live happily ever after? It ain't going to happen. And then I said the fourth thing, Bob, I said everything on the planet, on earth, in creation, has been thrown off kilter. So that now we have tsunamis, we have natural disasters, we have disease and so forth. So I said this is what's happened through the years as a result of being cut off from God that impacts every one of us. But then I said, I said over the years people have tried to get back to God in a number of different ways. Some say well I'm going to just be good. I said well the question is how good do you have to be to get to God? I said, if you have a 100% perfect God, then how good do I have to be to get to God? I have to be 100% good all the time. So nobody can do that. Or you'll come up with different philosophies, different cults. I had a man come to my office this past week, and he's, he's from Venezuela. He used to pitch for the uh, Chicago White Sox, a good-looking big old guy, probably 35 years old. And he said, I am a recovering Mormon. <laughs> And then he started telling me the stuff he's gone through since he wrote his letter and said, I'm out. I no longer want to be a Mormon. Cut off from his family. And on and on and on, the ostrac he's being ostracized as a result of getting out of that. Makes me a little nervous about the front runner right now in the presidential race. But anyway, <laughs> so he said, basically, he said, I'm trying to get to God by trying to be good enough. But the primary way people try to get to God is through religion. And all religion essentially are the same. And what they basically say this, keep the set of the rules of your religion, cross your fingers and hope you keep them good enough to make it to God. Again, how well do you have to keep them? 100% perfect because God can't have anyone in an intimate relationship with him who are less than 100% perfect. So therefore, gentlemen, the answer, the, 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 the conclusion you ought to be coming with that Bob came to is we're screwed. <laughs> because we can never be good enough. But I said, Bob, I've got some good news for you. And this 70-year-old atheist is sitting now on the edge of his seat. And here's what happened. Now what this is. Like that. 
Hold on, guys. Stick with me. It feels like, just like coming up out of that water. The back on? Okay, thank you. So this is what I said to Bob. I said, Bob, the problem that we've got is this old ugly thing called sin. But a sin is not the little stuff you do, the things that have been mentioned here already today. It's not the lust, it's not the that it's not cheating, stealing, lack of integrity. I said, that is the fruit of what this means. I said, basically, sin is a spiritual cancer. I said, Bob, there's something inside of you and me that makes me not want to do what the God that made me wants me to do. It's a rebellion in my heart and mind that basically said, I want to run the show. And I said, somehow, some way, if we're ever going to get connected with God, that issue has to be dealt with. Then I started pulling out a few verses. I said, the scripture says in Romans 3.23, for all of sin and come short of what God expects. The second thing it says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. I said, Bob, the penalty that I have to pay in all, because of this factor in my life is someday i got to curl my toes up, go six feet under and die. So the penalty has to be dealt with. Either I take the brunt of the penalty and pay the wages or somebody comes along and pays the penalty for me. And I said, Bob, you like football? Oh, man, I love football. I said, who's your favorite team? I won't tell you who he said his favorite team was. But, now listen to this. I said, Bob, how many downs in, in football? He said, four downs. I said, well, I'm going to use this so you can remember what I'm telling you. I said, number one, down number one. God looked down. Saw the mess we were in. Could have looked at us and said, you had your chance, but you messed up. Too bad, I'm out of here. He could have done that. And we could have all been, I told my wife, she said, where are you going today? I said, to a beast feast. She said, that's exactly where you need to be with all those other <laughs> crazy guys. <laughs> you would love my wife, by the way. She's a whole lot better looking than I am. Number two, not only did God look down, but Christ came down. God put skin on, came to the planet, lived for 33 years. When he spoke, people listened. When he touched people, they were made whole. He claimed to be God in a body. And either that's true or it's not. Everything hinges in our faith on whether he was who he claimed to be or not. If he's not, go believe in a gun or a tree or whatever. But if he was who he claimed to be, if he lived, died, and rose from the dead, Bubba, I had better tune in and understand what that means. But there's a third down. The third down is that Christ laid down his life on a cross. Why did he do that? Because this, I said, Bob, was God's plan to take care of the penalty that is due me. He said, I'm going to come and take your place and die on that cross and put that penalty on me. But I said, the good news, Bob, is not only did he do that, but he didn't stay dead. After three days, he pulled one of the greatest political coups of all history. He got up from the dead. Bob looked at me, really? I said, really? He really did that, Bob? But I said, some people like you, Bob, are probably thinking, well, that happened 2,000 years ago. What in the heck good is that going to do me now? Good question. So I said, Bob, there's a fourth down. And the fourth down is this. The scripture says that every knee must bow down. There comes a point in your life where you have to say, Uncle, I give up. Lord, come into my life. You say, where do you get that from? Well, there's a verse, something there in John where it says, To as many as received him, them to they be gave the right to become a son of God. I said, Bob, we're not naturally sons of God. He, we relate to God as our creator, but we're not, we don't belong to him. We have to be adopted back into his family. And the way we do that is through what Christ did. There comes that point when I have to get literally almost on my knees and in my heart and say, Lord, I give up. I can't get to you. But then we went to the kicker. 